at St. Hammond is the headmaster at St. let me in the door the other day. I carry like a big old stereo and bags yeah. on me. <laughs> She'll go this afternoon? No. Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. Yeah. Okay, we got some dance, we got some music. <laughs> this could be good. <laughs> we might have a party for it. It's over. <laughs> uh, Steve, uh, when he came to town, somebody hooked us up for lunch, and uh, we've been hooked up ever since <laughs> because we think alike. I just admire so much what he's done over at St. Patrick's. It was just a dream when he came. And now it's a big, beautiful, beautiful building. And uh, I wish all of you could go over there and see it. It's just awesome. And I would love that. We should, we should have a field trip over there. And I'll give yeah. it like an hour tour, mm -hmm. a 45 minute tour. Oh, yeah, we should do that. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, we could. I'd make sure you had something good to eat, so free lunch at that. Really? <laughs> Stages and 
and you're on a team right now. You're in this team, this educational team, but you've probably got half a dozen other teams you're on. And this is going to be very helpful information to you. You're going to, you're going to use what I'm about, about to tell you, you're going to use it the rest of your life. And I, and I will promise you that. I can guarantee you that. Because a team, what does a team do first? You've got a bunch of isolated people. What has to happen first? What happens? Yeah, come, come together. <laughs> so you got to come together. So we call that forming, right? You got to form. You got to form the team. What, what, what are the symptoms? What happens when you form a team? How do you feel? How about you? You're welcome. Quite welcome. Know this is that whenever your students offer you something, you know, never refuse. It can be the gooeyest, nastiest piece of gummiest chocolate or whatever. If they offer you something, they're doing it from their heart. It's the best thing you ever tasted in your whole life, the whole world. Is the best thing. That's a great piece of it. Thank you. Even though I had to kind of bum it a little. <laughs> what, happens, what do you feel like? What do you feel when you're uh, when a team is forming? You feel, I mean, you know, belonging. huh? Belonging. You feel belonging. That's, that's pretty nice. And how does belonging feel when you first get to it? Feels good, right? Feels good. You, you feel good when you kind of belong with the team. Yeah. Good. I do too. You feel good. Well, you feel good. You feel like okay, this has potential. This has energy. This has uh, the merit. <laughs> merit. This has like a lot of promise. This like, hey, we're going to do something. We're going to go someplace. We're going to take nothing. We're going to start with nothing, and we're going to make something out of it. Feels good. But then inevitably, human nature being what it is, what happens? What happens to the team? Fall apart. Huh? Starts to fray on the edges a little bit, gets a little ragged, <coughs> gets some bumps in the road, you know. What's happening when that happens? You know, what is happening? What's going on inter, uh, interpersonally? What's going on when it starts bumping like that? Change of attitude. Hmm? Change of attitude. Change, change of attitude. What causes a change of attitude? Personality. Huh? Personality conflict. Okay. Personality <laughs> conflict. So you, we start bumping into each other. I want this. I need this. But no, 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 no. You don't understand. I need this. See? And that takes priority of what you need. So, boom, boom, boom. I want to do it this way. You're not my boss. You're not the boss you're of not me. My mama. You're not my mama. You're not my mama. You know what I'm talking about, right? No? Would you say that happens on most of your team? Would it happen on your team? And? When that happens, we call that storming. So you first started with what? Now you got to storming. You're going to storm. You ever have that happen in a relationship? Yeah. <laughs> you, little, little relationship? you got a boyfriend, girlfriend that's ever happened to? No. Oh, everything is so blissful and so wonderful. Yeah. But personalities bump into each other, don't they? You know, it's going to happen. Happen. So we're going to start the storm. We have forming, and then we have storming. And we have storming. And storming comes when personalities bump into each other. Because, and we're going to go back and talk about why that is, because per so personalities are trying to express different needs. Different needs. Am I making sense? Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're trying to get to like this high level, but then what happens then? You know, we're storming, you know, we're just kind of getting, you know, like, you know, arguing and bickering and all this kind of stuff that happens, you know, after, you know, the, the bloom is off the rose a little bit. And then what happens now? What happens to get it, to have to get over that, what has to happen? Pardon? Communication. Communication, that's true. That is absolutely true. It has, takes communication. That is the vehicle, that's the medium that is going to set up this next deal. Compromise. 
Pardon? Compromising. Compromising. That is, a, that is great. And compromise is a process in which uh, this takes place. Because you, you have to communicate to compromise, right? You have to compromise to do what I'm trying to get to right now. <laughs> Pardon? That's pretty good. That is very good. Except their feelings and their wants, you validating feelings and wants, and I would say that would be part of the compromise because you have to have empathy. You kind of have to see where another person is coming from. You got to walk a mile in their shoes before you can kind of like get to what I'm trying to get to. Mend. Pardon? Mend it. Mend it back together. <laughs> mend it. Yeah, there's some mending that has to go on. You have to communicate to compromise. To under, no, you have to, you have to communicate and have empathy to compromise, to mend, to get to what I'm trying to get to. But you're getting there. This is what teaching's all about. You, know? you already have it inside. You. That's the biggest thing you know. The biggest thing about teaching is what, I'm going to get back to this, but the biggest thing about teaching is what Dorothy Gale, remember Dorothy Gale? Remember Dorothy? What, what, what was she the protagonist of? What? Wizard of Oz? Huh? Wizard of Oz? Remember there was a there was, there was a wizard of Oz. Dorothy Gale was the protagonist of Dorothy Gale. After all of her great things, that's she that's came that's and, uh, you know, and she's, you know, she got knocked out. She's waking up, and Annie M, and, you know, they're all worried, and you know, everybody's looking at uh, Captain Marvel's looking. I mean, Miss uh, Professor Marvel's looking in the window, and she he, she wakes up, okay, and uh, she tries to explain, and uh, think she can't explain too well, and then and then this hump, this scarecrow, says, "Well, what did you learn, Dorothy? What did you learn?" She's saying, "I learned all this on my great adventure." to Oz, and so what did you learn, Dorothy? And what did Dorothy say that she learned? This is the second most important thing. You'll never forget this. Ever. Pardon? I can't think of the English of I love Wizard of Oz. So many great lessons. But Dorothy says, Dorothy says, like, well, I learned this new place like home? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my gosh. laughs> no. But it's close. But it's, it's very, bad. very close. She did say that. Fell out the big, okay. <laughs> she said, that it's, there's a very different way. She said, you know, I think I learned. And she's looking at Hunk. And Hunk is this, Hunk was the scarecrow. But, you know, he's the farm now. Uh, and she says, I think I learned that if I ever go looking for my heart's desire and I find that it's not in my own backyard, then I, I never really lost it anyway. And she goes, is that right? And the scarecrow, oh, oh, that's right. If I ever go looking for my heart's desire and I find that it's not in my own backyard, So you've got the answers in your own backyard. <laughs> you've got the answers in here. And the third thing, therefore, is after you communicate and after you empathize and after you compromise and after you mend fences, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> you. You were right. I was wrong. <laughs> you develop rules and regulations. Okay? You develop develop guidelines, rules, and regulations in which you can agree to, to live by. Right? And you call that norming. You ever heard norms? Uh, you're going to live by some norms? norms. So now we have, norms. first is what? Form. Norming. Yep. The second? Storming. Storming. And the third? Norming. Norming. So we're going to norm. We're going to have to make up some rules that we can live by. In other words, compromise. We're going to start. That's part of it. It's not the whole thing. But we're compromise and uh, try to create some win-win situations that we can live by. So then we start to do that. Okay, if it's an athletic team, okay, we're going to agree to run by these plays. 
Here's our playbook. Here's our playbook. We're going to live by this playbook. Okay? This is what we're going to do. Can everybody agree with that? Everybody agrees to it? Okay. Then let's learn these things code. And if it's business, it's a business model, you know, whatever it is, it's, it's, it's that way. If it's, a, if it's a spousal relationship or a boyfriend, girlfriend relationship, it says, look, can we live by this? You know? When you do that, then the relationships get a lot better. And then that promotes high expectations. Did y'all see that last night? High expectations. Great expectations. <laughs> that was on last night, actually. It, it does, it, it, it really does have a top. It, it can, it starts to lead to great expectations, but that's not what I'm looking for. It, it leads to Accountability. Better relationships for sure. Because, you know, um, you ever heard the Beatles song, Try to See It My Way? Well, that's what we're doing. Try to see it your way. And so we're going to see it your way. We're going to see it my way. And then we come together with these norms. And now we're starting to live together. The relationships are better. And what happens to our behavior as a team? What happens? Pardon? Oh, reforms. I know. I was gonna say it warms. <laughs> what? <laughs> Warm. 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 Pretty good. There you go. That's pretty good. That's good I'm, I'm gonna have to think about that. That's, <laughs> that's a, it is just something of a reformation. It is something of a reform. <laughs> pretty good. What? But does what happens to the behavior as a team? Do we start working to better, better, or not so better? <laughs> <laughs> Better? Yes. Better? You sure? Yes. You seem very like concrete in that. Yes. You're right. <laughs> it's better. So like and we're gonna call that high performing. We start high performance. Starts out great expectations, forming. Bump into the personalities conflict. Bam, 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 bam. Hey look, we gotta if we're gonna get to anywhere, we gotta work this out. We're gonna start norming. Norm, and then we finally get to home. Oh, we're, we're working our plan. Everybody's on board. We start high performing. What I will guarantee you is, every team you will ever that you have ever been in, and, and that you will ever be in, will go through those stages. So now, knowing that right there, when uh, when you go into the storming stage, you might be forming a team right now. Uh, if you're forming relationships, you're forming a team. If you go into the storming stage. What can you do? How can this little piece of information help change your life? What do you have to do? You have to work to establish the norms. <laughs> so like, when everybody else is like in the fray, when everybody else is in the storm, what do you have? What can you do? Everybody else is in a storm. They're bickering. They're you know they're slugging it out. You know they're criticizing, blaming, complaining. They're trying to control each other. You know all they're doing all that kind of stuff. And then what can what what can you do? You're in a team. Sing a song. Huh? Sing a song. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I think you're prepared to say. Huh? Didn't you come prepared to say? Did you bring the guitar? I did. Yeah. I'll, I will maybe sing something if you want to. But like, like so, like, uh, what, um, what uh, do you have to get all caught up in it? Remind them there's no place like that. Just like a movie. No place like that. She says it so well, too, doesn't she? There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. What you never lost was always home. Right? It was always a place. It was always there. You always had it in your home. I think in teaching, one of the things that you can keep in mind, they already have most of them. They have the essentials. It's really mostly a process of unlocking them and letting them find out that they already know. They already know these a lot of people think that education is another widget. You know, it's another piece of hardware, it's another piece of software, 
you know, it's another program, it's another way to write, it's another way to do this. And they think, oh, those are the answers to education. That's <coughs> senseless. Senseless. True education is internal. It's internal. And when, and when we as educators start to claim that and know that these kids come to us with a host of talents and predilections and gifts and gaps, and that it's our job to know them. They don't come to us with, with a table of rasa, a clean slate in which we're going to imprint all that we know on their little slates. You know, if we enter into the syllogy, if we enter into the argument, the rationale like that, we've lost it before we even The real education starts in here. It's an inward journey. It's an inward journey. To capture, to realize, to actualize. teacher's job to facilitate. And that's what true education is. No place like that. Sorry. So we've got the storm. So we've okay, we got the, the we got the form, we got the form. What do you have to do? I'll tell you what, I would suggest you do, and this happens, and it could happen today, it could, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen a lot <coughs> in your lives. your time. As sure as night comes today, it's going to be your time to talk. Because people are going to work. Yeah, they're going to sit there, and after everybody's kind of doing this, they're going to sit there, and they're going to look at you. And you're just sitting there. Do you think that's going to pique anybody's curiosity? Yeah, it's going to sit there. And they'll finally, get, they'll finally come over, and they'll go, Josie Wells said, everything's yours, Josie Wells. The outlaw Josie Wells. <laughs> Does anybody like cowboy movies in here? No? <laughs> okay, I take the minority Sorry. position. Sorry. Then. Okay. Well, he said, you know, he said, you know, you, know, you better get up, you better, you better get about, uh, you have a choice, you can, you can start uh, getting about living, or you can start getting about dying. And so, so what's your choice? So, you know, do you want to choose life, go in the direction of great things and high expectations and group and love, these good things, or you want to get about dying in the big metaphorical picture of it, which is eroding, destruction, you know, kind of the unpleasant things in life that fear. Fear. Of all the nasty you know, unpleasant dimensions of human beings. Um, can you give me some of them? What are some emotions that are unpleasant? Hmm? She said envy. She said that. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Envy. Envy. Oh, I'm so distracted. Envy. So distracted. What else are some other things? Anger. 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 So distracted. What else? Bitterness. Pardon? Bitterness. Bitterness, you know, resent, bitterness, nasty kind of stuff. Jealousy. Kind of, pardon? Jealousy. Oh, yeah, jealousy, envy, oh, yeah. That just kind of starts taking us down. Bro. 
you know, so easy to slide into that. What else? There's some other kind of stuff that you don't want. Pardon? Greed. Greed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Greed is a great one. Insecurity. Insecurities, yes. Insecurities of different sorts, absolutely. Yeah. That's nice. Not nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice that you said that. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> Thing called fear, man, 
once you can facilitate, you can have these little ones come out of your classroom being all the more confident, being unafraid in ways that they could not have been before they made Wouldn't that be what you're So you have these norms, so you're sitting back, remember? You're sitting back, you're not fearing, you're not being <coughs> fearful, because you're just sitting back letting this thing unfold. Unfold as it will unfold, whether, you know. And then when people ask you, or maybe you have to intervene, you can say, well, may I, may I offer something? And everybody's going to be looking for answers. And you say, well, sure. What do you have to say? And then you say what you do. I think this is inevitable. I think groups do this, and our group has to do it too. But our group is such a such a combination of people with such potential and promise that I know we can get through this. We just have to set up some ways that we're going to agree to behave in our group, and we're going to be a high-performing group because that's our that's where we're headed. <coughs> and you start doing that. It takes negotiation, it takes compromise, it takes mending some relationship, it might be saying, taking us, I'm sorry, it might be saying, hey, look, my ego is engaged, I'm sorry, and, uh, I know it was. A little give, a little take, and, uh, and then finally you get to a set of um, norms that start to work, and then you start to, the team starts to emerge in a high performing kind of a team. And that feels Okay, now, I, I made this bold promise that you were, like, not, never going to forget, you know, some of these things. So, like, that you're going to keep this the like, rest of your life. And that, uh, and so, like, what's the, what's the, what are the stages of the evolution of any group? Form. 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 Forming. Storming. 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 Norming. Norming. High performing. Performing. Okay. Did we ever forget that? No. 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 Never. You will never forget that. And and not only that, because you're going to use that. Because it might be today. Because you're going to lay back when this is starting to happen, mm -hmm. and then you come out and say, "Let's reason together." Okay. Now, the other thing is the root of all uh, <coughs> negative uh, aspects to the human personality, what's the root? Fear. 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 And that, that is, uh, you can, when you're dealing with your little ones, or you can be dealing with big ones, and they're expressing this kind of, they're expressing what you might determine as jealousy or ambition or revenge or insecurities of different types, you can bet that they're scared then it becomes your kind of task to kind of help figure, figure that out. What, what, what are they afraid of? You know, what is it? Um, now let's get into that. Okay, those are the two things you're never going to forget, right? Right. Yeah. Right? Yep. Never going to forget because you're going to use it. It's meaningful information to you. Have, have, has anybody ever feared in here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know, we fear. We don't, we don't, we don't have. Something about that, yeah. What's one of your what's what's a fear? What's a big fear? Failure. Pardon? Failure. Failure. Fear. Failure. Fear. That's a big. Any other fears? That's good. Failure. Embarrassment. Embarrassment. We don't want to be. We don't want to be embarrassed. We don't want to be humiliated. Think kids experience that? Yep. Like every second, you mm -hmm. know. Like every second, you got to be careful about that. And, uh, and a lot of times, you know, I learned this lesson the hard way. Is that, you know, I like to kind of like kid around with people, you know, kind of, kind of joke a little bit, and kind of like have a good conversation. But you know, you got to earn that. You got to earn that. So people, that is, the kid has to trust you before he really or she really knows. You're just joking. It, it's not harmful. In fact, it's just an expression of, you know, um, 
friendship. You, gotta, you, gotta, you, have to, you have to earn trust before you can do that kind of thing. Doesn't take long, but yeah, you have to do it. So I mean, fa failure, embarrassment, <coughs> any other thing? Rejection. Pardon? Rejection. Rejection, yeah. Embarrassment. Yeah. Rejection, yeah. yeah. The rejection's huge. What about like some actual, um, actual things? Spiders. Pardon? Spiders. <laughs> Spiders. <laughs> You're creepy. You don't like spiders. Yeah. You know what the biological name for a spider is? An arachnid. Right, arachnid. <laughs> so like when you're scared of five spiders, you know what do you call it? Arachnophobia. What? Arachnophobia. Good, arachnophobia. You give me a word. Okay. So you wouldn't want me to come up and go, it's, it's. it's. Well, you don't look very much like the spider. Oh. <laughs> Go back 15,000 years. And now we're a clan. We're a tribe. We're a group. Or whatever you want to call us. We're a committee. Uh, we're here. And we're in the middle of the jungle. What's your name? Ruben. 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 
have said, what happens if somehow you get to be alone? What if you're put out of the group? What if you're shunned? What if you wake up and no one's there but you? What happens 15,000 years ago in this jungle without? setting up a classroom without fear is to question, to eliminate as much as you can B.S. Skinner's Skinnerian practices. You know what I mean by that? You remember who B.S. Skinner was? Do you? Kind of heard about him before. That's a, that is a good start. 
Bayard Skinner is Canarian in mm. psychology? The behavior kind of theory, Re yeah. rewards and punishments and all that. You can get people to do what you want, or behavior dogs modification. or animals, or just condition them. Yeah. There you go. Ooh, so like, I mean, I'm going to be very simplistic about this. this is very simplistic, but you know, that whole theory is that you know, I can control. Person can control behavior, human behavior. Uh, if I bribe you with stuff. And I can shape your behavior by bribing you or rewarding you, or I can shape your behavior by punishing you. you know? and, and my thought on this is this is it, this works pretty well for dogs and other animals, you know. But it's not the way you should be treating other human beings. You know? Not that it doesn't work sometimes, okay? You know, it has its, you know, it, it has its uh, work workability. But I want to tell you a little bit about the school that we started over here. Is that one of the first things is that we're not going to do. We're not going to buy into B.F. Skinner's frame. Now, B.F. Skinner's a great guy, brilliant, brilliant <coughs> fellow. Had a lot to contribute. I'm not trying to demean him. I'm just rejecting. You know his his work in, in a lot of senses. We we just eliminated B. F. Skinner stuff. There's no punishment. Now, can you imagine a Catholic school without punishment? <laughs> I mean, every nun should be turning over in her grave right now. Wondering what's going on? I can't do without punishment. Oh my God. The uh, there's no punishment. We're going to start with that. We're going to reject. We're not going to. We're not going to. And, and but on top of that, there's there's no reward. You know, there's no reward for. There's no stickers. No, my thing. That's, that's kind of wrong. You know, a school without stickers is like a day without sunshine. <laughs> it's like, hey, gosh, no no reward, no punch. No. When you take that stuff away from the classroom, what you're left And you know, children, children want to do what they want. You know, they want to do so great. Nobody wants to come in and say, I really want to fail. You know, they don't want to fail. They want to come in like hitting home runs. And you got to, and you start with that. And so, um, what we've done over here is to say, you know, we, we know that you really want to do great work. Kids mess up, you know. Um, they usually come in and they don't mess up, you know. Like it's the same. It's the same thing. I've been in this 40 years. You know, it's the same thing. Like you know, five percent of the kids mess up, you know, and they all have some behavioral issues or whatever. And uh, when they come in to me, I say, well, well, the first thing I want you to know is that.
then that's where the magic happens because then you come together and you start trying to like come up with a plan, their behavioral plan that makes it work. Okay. And then you don't become the totalitarian, you know, you know, purveyor of punishment. You become a, uh, a facilitator, a friend that's kind of help a counselor, if you will, a coach that's helping them get something that they already want. It was already home. I was really, I really wanted them to like it. I, it was here in my home, and I just was trying to do this, and it really worked out. It was, well, you know, there's another path home, you know, and we can figure that out. What if you try to do blah, 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 and then you're getting at the leads? Does that make sense? So there's four, there's four, uh, there's four questions that you can use for with kids. That uh, and you'll never forget these questions. You'll never forget these questions. So one thing is like, what do you want? I've never known a kid that wants something really bad. They don't. They don't want something really bad. And uh, what do you want? What are you doing to get it? Is it working? Can we develop a plan that might make it better? Four questions. What's the first one? What do you want? God, that was good. You should try it. What's the second one? What are you doing to get it? Yeah. You know, don't you need to start with that? What are you doing? You know, what's happening? I need to know that for my own information. And then uh, and then you can talk about that. Each one of these, you know, you need to talk a little bit about. What's the third one? Is it working? Is it working? Is it working? And then most of the time it's like not too well. And then this is the third one. Can we develop the plan? Let's get a let's get a plan and you know see it. I always, you know, I always write the plan down, or have them write the plan down. If you're dealing with that age, get them to write it down, and then here's the other little trick. Um, and I always do this. I would recommend it for you too, because if you don't, the plan will fail. It will fail every time. And that is to monitor and adjust that plan with regularity. And I'll have that little fella or that little girl come back, you know, daily. Takes them. I said, now, how's it working? Is it working? No, it's not working. Well, let's tweak it a little bit here, okay? And you just you monitor and adjust. If you don't give up on that, if you don't fail that, the plan is likely to work. If you fail that, uh, the plan won't work. I can guarantee you that. Monitor and adjust. Okay. We've only kind of gone now, like for 50 minutes. Have you gotten something out of this talk? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what are, what, are, what are a couple of the things that you can get that you got out of this talk? It makes me know that like I'm not totally crazy. Tell me something, you're gonna make me feel bad, you know. Storming, storming. Yeah. Say it. Storm, storm, norm. Storming, norming, high performing. Okay, and what is that? An evolution, an evolution of a group, right? Okay, that's good. And you're going to be able to use that as hopefully meaningful information. And then, okay, what's one other thing? I'm sorry? I said the one thing you created most is fear. I didn't hear you. I said the one thing you created the most is fear. It's the root of all negative emotion. <coughs> Okay, good. That's, that's a good thing. So getting at the getting at the fear. What else? Punishment does more. Say. Punishment does more. Punishment does more. In a long time. Oh, thank you. Yes, uh, punishment will work. I wish we had another. You know, good time. Punishment will work in the short term. Yeah. They're and better then, alternatives. Like I'm sorry. Better alternatives to punishment. They're much better. And punishment is short term. Because as soon as you turn your back, you can almost guarantee that that little rascal is going to do the same thing. You know? So uh, we're talking about long term behavioral change. And, uh, so that's good. Anything else? <laughs> Anything else? Oh, come on. What about the four questions? Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> What do you want to get 
And you don't forget about the uh, don't forget about the genetic encoding. I'm going to teach you some. Okay, now you got this. There'll be a test on it. I'll bring it in and I'll give it to Dr. Kersey. And if you believe that, we've got some oceanfront property in Arizona, right? Okay, here's a song. I mean, this is a song that we kind of like, uh, we made it our moniker at school. It comes along with some uh, hand signals. And it's we teach children to live in the moment. Live for today. It goes, it's a cool song. I changed the lyrics a little bit, but it goes, okay, now help me out. He goes, I'm going to live. You're going to live big. You're, gonna live big. You're not going to fear. You're going to live. You're going to laugh like a belly laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I love your tummy. And then I'm going to love. Just, like just a minute, just for today. What's right out in front of us? And I'm going to take, just turn your hands over, and I'm going to take all the trouble. Tomorrow might bring. Subjunctive, conditional, might bring. Put it away. We're going to drink like you're drinking from a big jug. We're going to drink every drop of happiness. Every drop of happiness until, and I can't do this here, until they cover me up. So reach down at your feet like you got a blanket. Cover yourself up all the way over here. Way up here, and then I'm going to live. I'm going to die. Oh, Okay, now can you get that as I sing the verse? I'm gonna live, laugh, love just for today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take play. all the trouble that tomorrow might bring and put it away. I'm gonna drink every drop of happiness until they cover me up. I'm gonna live, I'm gonna laugh, I'm gonna laugh. <laughs> Want to do that? Maybe we'll do that one more time. That's pretty good. Here we go. I'm going to live like oh, just for today. I'm going to take all the trouble that tomorrow might bring and put it away. I'm going to drink every drop of happiness until it covers me up. I'm going to live. I'm going to live. Y'all are unique and bright, Got a foul mind and worries all the time about what went wrong. Complaining, blaming, criticizing oh, okay. all day long. <laughs> I won't live my life worried what I don't want to be. I'll find the best in you and hope that you find the best in me. I'm going to live life in love just for today. I'm gonna take all the trouble that tomorrow might bring and put it away. I'm gonna drink every drop of happiness until they cover me up. I'm gonna live. I'm gonna laugh. I'm gonna love. This is my favorite verse. I got a cabin in the country and the tin roof rattles when the rain comes down. And the wind in the pines helps me unwind while the world goes round. I got friends that fill my heart so full that it overflows. And how it gets any better than this brother, I don't know. I'm gonna live my life just for a day. I'm gonna take all the trouble that tomorrow might bring and put it away. I'm gonna drink every drop of happiness until they cover me up. I'm gonna live. I'm gonna live. I'm gonna love. You gotta tag it. I'm gonna live. I'm gonna, I'm gonna laugh. laugh. I'm gonna love. Yay! You all come see me anytime you want to over at St. Patrick's, and I would love, I will give you a personal tour. I would love to continue this conversation, and I wish you the best in your life and in your teaching career. Thank you. Yes, thank you.